Welcome to Let's Not Play. Today, I won't be playing Fez. This um, is a bit of an odd choice because it was released a while ago, but it just got re-released and I just don't give a fuck anymore. I can't think of a game to do. And it got re-released and it got re-released to controversy. Somehow, somehow this guy made more controversy surrounding his game. I think he could just keep his head down, but I guess not. I guess there's no real reason to keep your head down when everyone just declared your game 10 out of 10 best platformer ever. People will buy it anyway, so you can behave however you want. No accountability. Now, I there's a group of uh, people I really respect, the best gamers, and they did a great review of Fez, so they really cooked this bird. So it's like double whammy. It's an old game, I don't know why I'm doing the review, but I just can't think of anything else to do. And I wanted to try a few things, like reading from a script and heavily ad-libbing, which I'm doing now. And I'm not playing a video game. I'm just standing here doing hand motions to no one. And this video, uh, you know, there are new things in this video, but what it's still going to feature is a lot of stupid generalizations, because I know you love them. And, and that's what you should do with these games, is don't trust reviews, don't trust your stupid friends, just just guess. Go with your heart, go with your gut. And my entire goal with this series is to produce something stupid and funny, something I find funny. I watch these videos and giggle like an idiot, and that's the point. And I want to fill a hole I think no one else is, because, you know, these game developers, I feel like a lot of them you know, act like they're working at McDonald's. Like, you'll read fucking Blizzard Blue Posts and you'd think the guy's not getting paid six figures to deal with idiots. But he is. These guys are getting a lot of money to do what they love, presumably. So you think they could have a little better attitudes and work a little harder, and maybe we'd have less shitty games. But that's not true. We have a bunch of bad games that get 10 out of 10s in magazines for no reason. And everyone laughs and drinks champagne. Now, developers have created this system, and you can't get an honest opinion before release, and after release, you lose all your DLC, you lose all your discounts, so you're fucked. And so in response, I've created, I've crafted my own ability to know whether a game is good or bad without playing it, without even hearing about it. I don't even need to see the box. All I need is the name, and I know if it's good or bad instantly. And it's taken me years, but I want to share this ability with you. I want to teach you. So I'm going to show you my process here. Um, um, these videos do have ads. I kind of want to discount it because if you don't have ad block, they must have been really annoying. But it'd be really cool to earn a little money on these fucking things. It'd be neat. Uh, you know, if you really hate them, call me an asshole. It's fine. So w w here are the reasons to pass up Fez. The creator is an asshole, like a huge asshole, a really big asshole. Um, it's all, it started recently with the PC re-release. Um, a few people got mad at him because the discount wasn't big enough and this or that. And he made, like, he basically shit his pants all over Twitter and made these really, like, rude replies to him. Like, not, like, I mean, it's not Brawl Hall, it's Twitter. And so then... A lot of people you know stepped it up and I thought that was rather funny he started shit because he got a few a few little rude tweets so he started shit and people just lost their crap and went nuts on him and he's basically picking his teeth up off the floor of Twitter right now um, go look at his Twitter account it's like he had a little mini meltdown and you can't tell if he's being an asshole on purpose or if he's faking it or whatever but the real point is they changed this avatar to Andy Kaufman and then had a fit about people being mean to him and people disliking him which I think is really funny it's pretty hilarious also he was like the golden boy for the longest time he was like blows jonathan blows great successor you know the squire the golden child and he got two igf rewards and that's money that's cash money i thought they just gave you a fucking psp vita but it's real money he got and he got it twice for a game in development and then he releases this game and never patches it because oh it's too much money you know, it's too much money. He didn't want to pay the money. And I guess he's saying it would have been financially impossible for him. He didn't earn nearly enough money to pay for the patch certification. And, you know, maybe that's his problem for putting it on Xbox Live. 
So now he's releasing it on Steam, and I think that's partially why people are mad about the discount, because they already bought it once, but who knows? The simple fact is he's an asshole. You could go look on his Twitter, and if you don't think he's an asshole by reading that Twitter, you're an asshole. Then go buy his game. You know, fuck you. Um, now, I think maybe bad people make bad games, and people have been... Well, one person told me I shouldn't hold my opinion against the creator of this game. I don't think that's right, because, you know, you don't buy music made by white power guys. If skinheads were selling brownies, no matter how good the brownies were, if the Ku Klux Klans did a brownie drive, you wouldn't participate. And and if someone walked up to you and was like, look, don't hold that cowl against these brownies. These brownies are delicious. Um, you know, just forget the fact that the money's going to an asshole. You'd be like, that's ridiculous. And it is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous thing to um, tell people that they can't hold someone's personality against them. Because when you tell that people that, and if you practice that, then you have this thing where there's no accountability, and game creators and people who are really kind of living their dreams kind of doing doing like a great thing that a great thing that many people are jealous of have no accountability and just have no limit on their behavior so they could be just just as big as assholes as they want and i mean it's not really your right when you become a public figure and when you work at the leisure of the public it's just not people can not buy your game if you're an asshole that's how it goes the game has text boxes which i hate um, I'm going to try to keep it quick. Basically, VVVVV had text boxes. They were full of crap I didn't care about, and they were written poorly. And I just wanted stupid jump puzzles, and I just couldn't stand it. Phil Fish, obviously, is not a good communicator. Otherwise, someone out there would think he's not an asshole, but everyone thinks he's a piece of shit. So, obviously, he can't communicate very well. He can't write well. None of these indie guys really can write well. And in these old games... They had limited text because they had text limitations. These indie guys don't, so they just go on and on and on like me. But, you know, this video didn't cost you 10 bucks. Fez will. Think about it. Now, dying doesn't matter in the game, and I, I've fought a lot with people over this. But I think the issue is that, um, you know, and I won't budge. You know, lives and continues make people design a game differently than not and lives and continues weren't carried on into console games because it was a lost artifact of the arcade era. Um, fucking Ed Edmund McMillan has not found the Rosetta Stone of game design by giving you fucking instant respawns on a little uh, obstacle course level. He hasn't. Lives matter. And when you have lives in a game, you look at a game like uh, Super Ghosts and Goblins. You can't go through Super Ghosts and Goblin trial and error. It would take you too long. Eventually, you have to get good at those jumps. But in Super Meat Boy, you can go through in trial and error. And you may get good at those jumps. You may or may not, but you can still go through by trial and error. That's the same as VVVV, as Fez, as I Want to Be the Guy, as any of those games. It's I Want to Be the Guy is a little different because it's not... Um, it has checkpoints, but whatever. And that's that's just how it is. That's that's the reality of the situation. I'm telling you, uh, the reality of the situation. Now, the the major thing is the indie game is not zero sum. When you buy one indie game, you don't have as much money for the next indie game. So uh, invariably, some platformer comes out, and it's like, hey, this is great. Hey, this is great. Everyone gives you a 9 out of 10, you buy that platformer, and then all these other games that may not be platforms, maybe 3D, may have taken a lot more money and time and effort to make. Maybe made by a person who's better, who's a nicer person, who will really appreciate your money and then work on another game that you'll really enjoy. He's not going to get that money, because he already spent it on an asshole. And these games, these other games which are not made by... Um, you know, really artsy fartsy people who who go out and schmooze Kotaku writers or whatever have really cool fake '80s intros for their for their games. Uh, you know, they get left in the dust. Like uh, Strike Suit Zero got a bunch of bad reviews because people couldn't do the third mission. I did that third mission on my second try, and 
you know, so what? The game's hard. It's actually hard, though. You actually have to try, and that's why everyone was so upset. They were so used to easy games that something that actually played like a retro game um, made them flip their shit, because they're not used to it. And there, there are other games like Lugaroo, which is a 3D game where you play a bunny, and you go and murder other bunnies brutally. And I think that's a lot better game uh, than hotline miami but it's never going to become as popular because it's not 2d it's not accessible to retards you can't play it on your fucking ipad so it's like what's the point why even review it why even give it a review it's just a waste of print so they're going to give hotline miami a 10 out of 10 everyone will play it on their iphones and like great great gaming stead that's great um so that's basically it if you're thinking of buying this game don't and if you just bought it don't play it simple right just delete it on steam put it i have a little folder called bad games for when i make these mistakes you have no obligation to let this asshole make an impression on you and if you're playing this game and you're not having fun just quit i mean you have no sense of obligation mmo players probably know what i'm talking about where you're stuck in a rut and you feel like well i gotta get something out of this purchase you don't I mean, it's 10 bucks, that's like three monster energy drinks, and those fucking things clog your arteries anyway, so cut it out, guys. You're all gonna die if you keep chugging them. And the game just isn't a 9 out of 10, it's not 8 out of 10, it's probably barely a 7 out of 10. So just treat it like it. Throw it to the bottom of your Steam list, back of your closet, whatever. And maybe this guy, when he sees his five minutes of fame, have evaporated before him and he's just known as a loud asshole, maybe he'll reflect on his life and grow. Maybe he'll hang himself in a hotel. I don't fucking know. But you can control what you do. Don't buy this game. And thank you very much. Have a good day.